In Maya 2014, we've added a, a number of additional joint creation options that make the creation of character skeletons much quicker and easier. So here what we see is a skeleton, or rather a mesh without a skeleton. So I'm going to actually create a skeleton for this mesh. So we'll go into our front point of view and we'll open up the joint tool and we'll start by just resetting the tool to the default settings. Now what you'll notice is if I begin to drop down some joints in here, as I drop down these joints, it looks as though they're getting created in the center of the character. But if we go into the perspective view, what you'll notice is that the joints actually are getting created offset from the character. Now this is actually because I've created the character offset from the grid, uh, mainly just to kind of illustrate this point. But it's even more exaggerated if you work from the perspective view. If we drop down some joints that we think are going in our character, and then we move around the side, you'll see that those joints actually get created way off on the side, um, on the ground essentially, which is not really useful for anybody. So what we can do now is go to the front point of view, or any point of view really, and for the joint creation tool we have the option of using the projected center of the mesh. So we're going to pull in here and we're going to drop down some joints for the back. So I'll create a few spine joints and I'll go all the way up to the center of the back. Actually, I was a little off on that one. Let's uh, recreate that. And then I'll just hit enter and I'll move back into the perspective view and let's just temporarily turn off our grid. And what you'll see is that those new joints get created at the center of my character, whichever mesh that I happen to be targeting. So we can continue and we can drop this down onto the rest of the, the body parts, but along the way we can also turn on a mirroring option. So now we have symmetry built into the joint tool. So if we turn on x-axis symmetry and then we come in here and we drop down say for instance a clavicle and a shoulder and an elbow, you can see that as I begin to drop down these joints it will actually insert them at the center point of that piece of the geometry. And just to give you an idea of how quickly this can work, I'll just drop down some additional joints for the thumb and then just quickly go up the chain and continue dropping down joints for, for instance, fingers. And I'll just quickly go in and basically drop down joint chains for each individual finger and you can get an idea of how quickly I can do this. Again, you can change your orientation or your position to kind of suit the uh, appropriate angle uh, for whatever body part you happen to be working with. So now let's drop down one for the finger here. We'll finish off these joints. I didn't get that quite right, but you get the basic idea. And now what you'll see is if I look on the other side of the character, if I have symmetry with my character, of course, then it's going to match the symmetry on the other side. Now one thing that's cool about this is that we can also go in and make changes to the symmetry. So if I grab this joint, for instance, and I wanted to change the position of the shoulder, I can just go into Move and hit Insert to change the position of that, and you can see that will actually change the relative position on the other side. So we can move that clavicle up towards the front of the where the collarbone would actually be. Now we can take that and we can just parent it into the existing joint chain. Take this one again and parent that into the existing joint chain. And now I've got a complete upper body skeleton. So let's just continue this process and we'll go down the, the uh, leg here. So we'll add some hip joints and then we'll come in and we'll drop down a knee joint. And then we'll go kind of uh, from the front and then down to the side for dropping in those toe joints or rather the ball joint and then we'll drop the toe joint in there. And again, if at any point I need to make some changes, whether that be by rotating, for instance, I can go in and rotate, or whether that be by actually moving the full joint chain, I can actually move, or I can go into insert mode and reposition just the joint itself. So let's finish just by going in and parenting in these new joints. So I'm just going to parent that one there and parent this one here. And now I've got a complete joint uh, structure set up for my character. Now I'm not going to take the time to do the head right now, but you get the basic idea for the process. Now another thing that of course is important when you're dealing with joints is the joint orientation for your um, local rotation axis. So we're going to go in and we're going to display the local rotation axis for all of these objects and I'll actually just go in and just select the hierarchy and we'll just turn on the local rotation. So let's just go on and make sure we have our uh, handles displayed. So we'll toggle on the handles and there you can see the, the local rotation uh, for each one of these. So now what I want to do is actually begin to edit the local rotation. 
um, and actually see that mirror over to the other side. So just for display purposes, I'm going to hide the mesh so that we can actually look at the skeleton itself. And you'll see that it does indeed invert those local rotations. But in some cases, I may not get the actual local rotation that I want by default. So for instance, if I were to go in here and actually let's just uh, move this in a little bit, something like that, and then begin to rotate it, what you'll notice if I uh, go into rotate mode here, is that as I rotate these, these are these are going to kind of rotate inward and outward. So these are kind of rotating at the wrong angle. So of course I'd probably want to go in and change the local rot rotation axis. So that is mirrored as well, which is of course very important. So I can come in here and I can basically just turn on my, my local rotation selection, which is right here. And I can grab these local rotation axes and you can see that as I turn one it affects the other so I could use my joint orientation tool to actually go in and and automate this or I can manually go in and set these and that is indeed going to mirror over to the other side so now if I go back into the rotation you can see now I've basically realigned the rotation axes so that I'm getting the appropriate rotation at the joints so again I can go in and I can automate this so if I wanted to take this particular one and set it to the world or if I wanted to take these and use the joint uh, orient tool so for instance I can go into the uh, orient joint tool here and I can basically align these uh, with a given axis and apply and you'll notice that when I applied that, that was before and that was after, that applied that to all those. So let's just go in and turn off the display of these local axes and I'll just turn off my handles in order to do that. And we'll bring back the mesh and then we'll just do a quick skin. So we'll take that skeleton and we'll go in, grab the skin and apply a smooth bind with the new heat map option that was added in 2013. And you can see in probably a couple of minutes I was able to go in and create a really nice skeleton that aligned perfectly with my character and then using the new skinning algorithm from 2013 I was able to go in and get some really nice skinning on that character as well. So there you go, a much improved workflow from what we previously had, new in 2014.